Hey guys, welcome to Raw TV, Real and Willing Television. I'm Taylor Wilkerson. And I'm Amanda Button. We are here at the Polk Theater in Lakeland, Florida, setting up for Southeastern University's annual conference, as you can see it's gonna behind be a blast. us. Yes, we just met with over 200 volunteers that are amping up for this entire week of conference. Yes, we're going to be kind of giving you a behind the scenes look at what's going on here at conference. We're going to be interviewing people like Chad Veach, Carl Lentz, Stovall Weems, Christine Kane, Andrew Gard. It is going to be a blast, guys, so make sure you stay tuned. And I'm Phil Bellamy. And today we are here at the second annual SEU Conference. We've got a VIP pass to give away, so stay with us while we do some interviews. Let's go. Yeah! What do you think God's going to do in your life this week during conference? I just think it's going to be just an eye-opening experience just to hear from so many different people all at the same time. It's just a really cool opportunity, I guess, that we have. Well, I expect him to show up, of course, for one, which he's going to do. And um, in my heart, I expect him um, just to meet me and guide me um, just to learn more about him. I think he's definitely going to stretch me and my trust and my faith with him. So I'm pretty excited for that. A little bit nervous, but I can't wait to see what's going to happen. They said that Christine... Kane was going to be here and she is the one that I came for. She's on fire. Would you would you say she's your favorite speaker? Oh, she's my favorite speaker, absolutely. I'm really excited to hear Christine Kane and stuff like that, but um, I think worship will be really good. Like I'm excited for worship. Like Music is going to be amazing? Yes. Is it always amazing? Yes. I have found a group of students from the Jacksonville Southeastern Campus here in line for SEU Conference! Yeah. What are you most looking forward to? Ladies first. Um, I would have to say Christine Kane, for sure. She's my favorite. She is on fire, right? Yeah. And our pastor is actually speaking tomorrow morning. Who's your pastor? Pastor Sobal. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. All right, boys. What are you most looking forward to? Carl Lentz, my boy Carl from New York. Yes, sir. Who are you looking forward to? Pastor Sobal and the after party. Nice. Well, you heard it from them. Conference second annual. We're here. Hey guys, I'm here with Charlie Dawes, and we are less than 20 minutes away from conference. Okay, I just want to ask you a few questions. First, what are you most looking forward to about conference? Um, I'm looking forward to tonight. Looking forward to Christine Kane. Uh, I can't wait to hear just the word that she brings to our community. I uh, can't wait for worship. I can't wait to download the album at midnight. I mean, there's so many things. It's hard to pick one. Uh, I'm looking forward to everything, but probably, honestly, the thing I'm most looking forward to is just to worship with our band. Man, we're, to worship with SE Worship and just... Uh, um, and to just uh, you know be at service with thousands of kind of young adults, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good time. But I'm most looking forward to the worship. Yeah. Well, um, we have the SEU album coming out tomorrow. So how long has that been in the works? Like we've known about it since um, Seek '77, right? Um, but how long have you guys been had this idea that you've um, like manifested and finally it's coming? How long has it been? 
about about a year and a half ago uh, when I talked to uh, Chase Wagner about coming on staff. We knew we wanted to do records. We knew we wanted to um, kind of create a culture of worship, songwriting, things like that. And so for about a year and a half, we've been praying about it and thinking about it and strategizing about it. So it's kind of fun for it to come to fruition now. What speaker are you looking forward to the most? Um, probably Carl Lentz. Uh, waiting to hear him kind of on Wednesday. Christine tonight is going to be really good. Uh, so these answers are contradictory. So it's not Andrew Gard. Andrew Gard's not your favorite speaker. Is that what you're saying? Uh, my favorite, my favorite friend of the speakers. But, but yes. So just not Andrew Gard. That's what you're saying. Andrew, he's watching this. I, I, I like, I like Andrew. He, he's a nice, a nice fellow. Now, who's the best looking speaker? Like I'm speaking now. Does that count? Yes. Thank you, Charlie Dawes. You do what you want out of passion. No one has to make you get up and pray. No one has to make you fast. No one has to make you read your Bible. No one has to make you talk to anyone about Christ. No one has to make you because it's so permeated the very core of your being that it flows out of you, flow rivers of living water. Do you remember when, Matt, when um, Mel Gibson did the movie The Passion of the Christ? Did you notice it was not called the boring religious obligation of the Christ? Passion! There's a lot to be said for passion. And in a place where we are stimulating our intellect and we are adding degree to our degree, I want the fire of God to burn in your hearts with a passion for the living, resurrected Jesus Christ. We need a passion for God. What is God's passion? He has a holy obsession. Always has been, always will be this side of eternity. It's for lost people. Jesus came to seek and save that, which was lost. In fact, in Luke chapter 15, one chapter, three parables, one subject. You tell me where you find that anywhere from Genesis to Revelation, anywhere. One chapter, three parables, one subject. Christians ought to be lostologists. We ought to understand the lost better than anyone else, but about the only thing we're good at is judging Commenting on, blogging on, endorsing. Remember, tolerance is not endorsement. Just throwing that in for free. Because we have no understanding of the lost. And Jesus said, let me explain to you what I'm obsessed with. My father so loved this world and lost people that he sent me to die for them. Not so that my church can become obsessed with doing church, but so that my church would be the church and finish the work that I started. Guys, we are here with the fabulous Christine Kane, who absolutely blew it up tonight on our first night of conference. Uh, what were you expecting coming here to our, our conference? I was so excited. I'd only ever heard fantastic things about... Um, the school and the conference so I was pretty fired up and I wasn't disappointed that's for sure the the students were just so full of faith and hope and just excited so it was great that's awesome um, you spoke a little bit about your story and about the a21 campaign that you're involved um, can you tell us a little bit about that yeah I think you know we um, help to rescue the victims of human trafficking all over the world and I come from a, a background of abuse and adoption and abandonment so I think it's just really uh, the testimony of the grace of God that he would work all things together for good and um, and that I, who have been rescued, am now being used to rescue other people. So it's yeah. pretty exciting. I think that story really resonated with a lot of people tonight. Um, besides giving monetarily, which we all can do and should do, what are some other ways that we can get involved with ending human trafficking? Yeah, I think the greatest way is go online to the a21campaign.org. I've got 21 things you can do today to begin to make a difference. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we definitely need to make sure we check that out. And thank you so much for speaking with us. We really appreciate it. Love it. Thanks. Thank you all. I'm here with Pastor Chris Owen, and Pastor Chris, we want to ask you just a few questions about conference. The first night of conference, it's finally over. What are your thoughts about how first night went? My first, my initial thought is it's going to be a lot of pressure for who's coming next. Uh, tonight literally felt like the last night, the biggest night. To have Christine Kane uh, to start us off was unbelievable. But I think highlight moment for tonight was when she gave the call for young ladies feeling a call to ministry and to look around and see a sea of hands. Uh, it's just priceless. It's just unbelievable. Tonight was incredible. The opening night, I mean, I couldn't have imagined uh, a night like we've had already uh, in this conference. And I think 
the thing that is most important, and I think Christine set the bar tonight, uh, this is all about uh, uh, these days being days of destiny. Uh, the album comes out in just a few hours. Yes. Our first worship album, it's going to be insane. Um, what do you think the impact of that album could possibly be for Southeastern and then the global church? You know, I think for years people have felt like they had to fly to Hillsong to actually get to a, a solid worship school. And I think they're going to see that's different. I think Southeastern is going to emerge as a hub uh, for worship leaders, songwriters, creatives. Uh, and I'm just, I'm stoked. Oh my goodness. I, I really believe it's going to chart top 10 in Christian music. I really believe that. And I, and I believe that because the music, the, the, the inspiration, I've, I've had a chance to already listen to the CD and I've been planning it in my car and wherever I go on my uh, on my uh, on iPhone and, and it's I tell you it's life changing just listening to the words God spoke through our students and created a message that I think we need to hear and when you hear that message it's going to change your life and that's why I think it's going to be so powerful and that's why I think it's going to chart it's going to be great thank you so much President Engel awesome. Then Jesus has a dialogue with her. Look, if you knew who I was, you'd ask of me. I'd give you living water. I would satisfy you in a way. You're looking for something to satisfy and ease the pain. You're looking it for in all these men. You'll never be satisfied that way. I can give you something that man can't give you. Where you will never thirst again. Then she, oh, well, the Messiah comes. He'll teach us about all this. Jesus basically says, I am the Messiah. I am teaching you about all this. And then Jesus teaches about worship. Father's looking for those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. This is my question to you. Why did Jesus choose this downcast, adulterous, Samaritan woman to teach about worship? Because he wanted to take someone who needed a reprieve from the pain, a break from the hardness, from the abuse, from the temptation, from the trauma. Jesus took that Samaritan woman who was the lowest of the low. Who knows what kind of life she had lived as she got up to this point. And that's who he taught about worship. What he was basically saying is, look, it doesn't matter what you've been through, what you've done. This life is going to stack on the pain. And the only place that you can get a reprieve from your flesh, that you can get relief from your pain, is by engaging God in true worship. By having an at that moment experience. That's where the living water comes down from heaven. I am here with Daniel Rivera and Stephen Howell. They are both on the SEU uh, worship team, and the album just came out today, guys, and it's already at number two in the Christian uh, chart. That's pretty incredible. It's top 50 on all of iTunes. Uh, Daniel, you were just saying uh, that you're getting texts and texts, people just encouraging you about everything that's been going on. I just, I just want to hear kind of your thoughts, how you're feeling now that the album's finally out. Oh, man. Um, 
it's pretty unreal. Uh, but it, yeah, I, I guess it's a, I don't I, I'm kind of at a loss of words, honestly. <laughs> That's good. I mean, like yeah. it, it's it's an insane thing. Stephen, how about you? How, how are you feeling? It's finally out. Months of work. How are you feeling? Uh, I keep checking my phone, and it's one of those things where I'm like. Oh, like, I, I want to get to the next one. And then I realized that iTunes is something that everybody has. And I realized how big of a deal that it is to see it at number two. Because I, th- I just see, like, numbers. And I'm like, oh, uh, I guess, you know, like, we can beat number one. But then you realize, like, how huge iTunes is. And then it just, like, swallowed into something where we're just, it's just such, it's so much bigger than us. Your love is strong, cause your love is strong, it goes on for eternity, oh so complete, so complete, so complete, is your love for me, so faithful and just, and faithful and just are you. Let me praise unto him. Praise up to him. God, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy, Father. Nothing compares. Hey guys, we're here at the SEU conference after party. Looks like a lot of fun stuff's going on. People are hanging out, getting to know one another. Service just got out, so we're going to ask some people some questions. What has the Lord been speaking to you over these past few days here at conference? Well, he's actually been revealing a lot of his will for me um, lately, especially last night. Um, he showed me that he might not want me where I am right now, and um, it's pretty big. Well, I think um, he's reinforcing to me the, the fact that um, he's speaking on my life that I need to be disciplined with my time. 
um, and just giving God everything. Um, and, and that's been something that's been reoccurring over the year, but it's really been it really been pressing in um, at this time at conference. It's just been like what the speakers have been saying, what God's been saying to me at the worship time. So that's kind of just giving my time to God, I guess. It's been incredible. It's totally wrecking my life. It's changing my whole plan of where I think I'm going to go with my future. It's been incredible. I truly, genuinely feel that my life has been um, changed for the better um, just by tonight and just uh, how God met me. Well guys, the after party has been a blast. It is bumping. People are having a good time. Right now we're going back to the pole. But what you really need, especially in this kingdom, is you need a response. You need a response to the word. You need a response to Jesus. You need to respond to the Holy Spirit. There's something about a response, because watch this. Response leads to action, and action to lifestyle. Church, we are not here just so, so like Andrew said, we can be impacted, but I'm telling you, we are called here to lead for change. And when you start to respond to God, it leads to change in your life. It's not a moment. We are not hearers of the word. We're doers of the word. We don't just want action. We want lifestyle. We don't want information or inspiration. We want application. So we've come today not just to react to some worship, not to react to ascend the hill, not to react to a word. We've come here to respond to the grace of Jesus Christ, to the call of God on our life. Is anybody here at Southeastern University ready to respond to the call of God? If you believe it, give God a shout of praise and thank him for who he is. You and I still think that for some reason, one moment of weakness, one moment of sin, and we can bring separation between God's blessing in our life, God's grace in our life. One move and all of a sudden now I'm not in good graces with God. The Bible says neither height nor depth nor power nor principality nor angel nor demon nothing can separate us from the love of God. I'm telling you you can't shake God. You can't lose God. His hand is on your life. His favor is on your life. His goodness is with you. His mercy is with you. I'm telling you he's made up his mind. It's not a conditional love. It's an unconditional love. He's going to be with you. David said where can I go from your presence? Even if I go down there you are still with me. Come on God's with you. Never Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. My hand is on you. My grace is on you. I've anointed you. I've accepted you. I've approved of you. Come on, is anybody here thankful that it's goodness? Thankful that it's mercy? It's going to be new every day. Oh, if you believe it, give God a shout of praise and thank him for who he is. Come on. here in the VIP section, we are waiting outside SEU Conference at the Polk Theater. That is right. We've had some awesome speakers so far. We've had an album drop on iTunes. That's right. It's been awesome. And guess what we have today, Phil? I think we have some VIP, VIP passes. passes. What was the most amazing part of conference so far? Well, I mean, for me, the most amazing part of the conference, uh, last night the worship was absolutely amazing. Hearing the word uh, from the speaker like, really just touched me, and I'm so glad that I came even tonight and just ready to see what God has in store for us. I think Stovall Weems because he punched me in the face a lot with what he had to say. I liked the uh, album coming out, how they're, it's top 40 now on iTunes. I would never in a million years would have thought that like I'd be on an album that is marked number two on the charts next to Chris Tomlin and Jeremy Camp. I love the music. I love Christine Kane. It was just all amazing. Last night um, when Christine Kane was speaking, she was talking about um, women pastors and preachers and she spoke holy fire over everyone that had their hands raised and it was, it was amazing. God's revealing stuff in my life that I didn't even know was there. The speakers have been on point. Christine Kane killed it. Like I've never heard a preacher like her. Like even she's probably the best speaker I've ever like seen in my life. So just that amongst like just the excellence, just the heart, the fact that we're here to like reach the community, it's like the whole experience is crazy. It really impacted me when she said, you know, whole like let God turn the dial when she said about that. And I feel like I'm in the right major, but maybe not like completely. So I feel like I need to make some changes and uh, see what God can do. That's 
That's good, guys. Thank you so much. I've really liked their answer, and I know y'all have too. So they are both getting our VIP passes. Here you go, guys. From the VIP section to the back of the line, we have students here from Southeast University and around the community who are stoked about what God's doing in their life here at SCU Conference. Thanks for staying with us. Back to you guys. This has nothing to do with the worship team. You don't need a degree. You don't need a pulpit. You don't need some ministry background. You don't have to memorize Leviticus. You got to know how to worship God when you're at the bottom. Can you imagine? There would have been a board meeting in hell and somebody would have got fired on this day. Can you imagine that meeting in hell? It would have been like, really? We had these dudes locked up and they were about to die. And suddenly they all did this stuff. They started praying and a revival meeting broke out. Somebody got fired. I pray that there's so much praise coming out of Lakeland, Florida. It does not matter what this world does to you. It will not change what comes through you. Every time I read this story, I'm reminded of one thing. And doing church in New York City, some of you are like, is this guy a little bit crazy? Yeah, I am. You pastor a church in New York. See how crazy you sound. Just glad I'm still alive. But every time I read this, Chad's laughing. You're laughing now. Wait till you get your church. Why well, see you? <laughs> one big lesson. Write this down if you don't mind. Don't even try to get into heaven without writing all these notes down. They will not let you in. Your praise has to always overcome your preference. It's what I get out of this scripture. Your praise has to overcome how you feel. We live in a generation right now, and I'm 34, I realize I'm old, y'all think I'm an old man, whatever. But we have a generation, mine and yours, and the one behind us, where people really think that your feelings matter. Where did we get this idea that how you feel matters as a Christian? I don't feel like doing this, and I don't feel like going to church, and I don't know if I feel like doing I don't know if I feel like going to church, because every time I come to church, it's growing, and the pastor's doing different things, and all the time I'm 